Every year, Montreal hosts what is arguably, almost definitely, the biggest comedy festival in the entire world called Just for Laughs It's actually festival. pronounced Just for Laughs. Yes, it's in French Canada. The festival itself is celebrating its 36th year in 2018, and it takes place over the course of around two weeks. It features live performances from the biggest names in stand-up, improv, sketch comedy, and more. Now, for at least the past few years, probably longer, Variety has been hosting an event at the festival called Variety's 10 Comics to Watch, which showcases the talents of up-and-coming comedians and allows them to perform at a large event for more mainstream audiences that might not be aware of them already. Now, this year, Variety decided to send an up-and-coming comedian from YouTube. Oh, good. Uh -huh. Now, it should be said that YouTube is a fantastic platform for comedians who want to promote themselves by uploading full sets, doing sketch comedy videos, and so on. Bo Burnham, yes. who just put out his directorial debut this past week, mm -hmm. got his start on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, there's been a few big YouTubers ha who have turned their success on the platform into full-fledged comedy careers. Bo Burnham being probably the biggest one. He started out on YouTube when it was still in its infancy, and uh, he's since gone on to sell out live performances. He released his first major motion picture, Eighth Grade, which is getting pretty good reviews. Mm -hmm. So it happens. Yes. It happens. But mostly it doesn't. And <laughs> uh, one of the comedians booked for Variety's show this year, well, certainly didn't fit with what you would typically consider for stand-up comedy. Meet Darren Knight, the creator of a character known as Southern Mama, which, as far as we can tell, he, he started picking up steam with uploads to Facebook and YouTube that started out with compilation videos of the character similar to Vine compilations. So just based on the name alone, Southern Mama, you can probably understand what this character is. Darren Knight is a guy from Alabama that acts like a Southern Mama and records himself just acting in that typical stereotype for an audience of people online who probably enjoy the relatability of the caricature of someone that they might have grown up with, regardless of the time period in which they were raised. I just like the funny voice. It is a, it's a really good impersonation. It's a really good funny voice. You guys know about when your mom's made you clean stuff up? Relatable. Yep. Yeah, so anyway, that's all fine and good, whatever. But thanks to Darren's relentless marketing of himself as, and he literally calls himself this, the fastest rising comedian in American history. Wow. And uh, also using his YouTube and Facebook views to market himself and a handful of live events, all as a measurement of his success in the general comedy world, which is inaccurate. Mm -hmm. By doing that, he was able to secure a spot on this year's list of the 10 comics to watch, which allowed him to perform at one of the biggest comedy festivals in the world. Was he ready to take his brand of comedy out of the South, where it can sometimes be relatable to those people, and onto the international stage in the city of Montreal, Canada? Apparently, shockingly, the answer was a resounding no, or more a resounding boo. Are they saying boo or no? It's both actually this time. It's definitely not boo earns. Mm -mm. So when he took the stage as the closing act, by the way, the oh, grand wow. finale, uh, he apparently kicked things off with a joke that went to our wives and girlfriends. May they never meet, which aside from being pretty weak, coming from one of the top 10 comics to watch this year, was also stolen from a comedian who's been dead for 40 years named Groucho Marx. <laughs> I didn't think anyone knew who this Groucho Marx guy was. Yeah. Now, according to those in attendance and numerous articles written about the event, Knight then spent a majority of his time on stage thanking the organizers of the festival while forgetting the actual name of the festival. It's a good way to kill time. If you're like dying up on stage, even if you're not doing comedy, you just thank the people that uh, got crowd you there. Crowd work, yeah. yeah and crowd it's, uh... work eats up the time. Uh, one of the biggest crowd worker sensations out there, Dave Rubin. Yeah. You ever watch... Uh, comedian turned uh, talk show host Dave Rubin's live yeah. sets. Just like 100% crowd work. Well, Got uh, any Democrats here? Yeah. Got well, any Republicans here? The thing is, is if you're dying up on stage, just thank people. Thanks yeah. for having me out. Thanks for this. No one can boo that. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, majority of the time thanking people at the festival while forgetting the name of the festival. And then the rest of the time bragging about his social media numbers while also sprinkling in some jokes about diarrhea here and there. Hey, we, can, we all get it. He is the, it, it, I will say, king of relatable comedy. Every, like, He's the poop king of comedy. I don't want to go out to, on too far of a limb, but I'm going to say it anyway. Almost everyone in the world has a mom. Yeah. Uh, and almost everyone in the world probably has had diarrhea at some point in their life. Yeah. So Especially relatable. eating all that poutine up there. <laughs> it's probably where he got his inspiration. Yeah. Dang, I thought southern food was crazy. They put cheese curds on French fries? But at least that would at least get a, that would be that would get a, a reaction from the crowd. It's like going there and be like, 
like when you go to a city and then you call out the name of a local yeah. establishment, woo! you're like, woo! <laughs> I was just down at the Pep Boys on 47th. Woo! I ain't to say I'm windshield wiper blades from there too, woo! <laughs> but yeah, that might have worked, but it didn't. Yeah, so it should probably come as no surprise that uh, eventually he was just booed off the stage at the conclusion of his set, which included him saying, for whatever reason, that people didn't pay to come listen to him talk about race or sexual orientation, even though stand-up, you know, it has been since its inception, a way for some comedians to talk about uncomfortable subjects in a way that's smart and funny. No, but he was just like, nope, this isn't what comedy's about. Yeah, he literally explained- As a comedian. He explained to a room full of people who had been laughing for hours at multiple comedy sets why their taste in comedy was bad. Yes. It's a he, bold move. He also did it on a pre-show panel when, when other comedians brought up that they would use comedy as a way to deflate sexism and racism. So he knows best apparently. So yeah, the backlash online and throughout the stand-up community was massive with people calling him out for bombing on stage during a spot that could have been better suited to what most would consider a real stand-up comedian and also accusing him of trying to define what comedy is to a room of people who certainly know what comedy is, especially the comedians and people who are probably not very keen on letting the guy who just got booed off stage define their art or offer them advice on how to hone their craft. Yeah. Um, what most likely happened here is that Knight spent so much time marketing himself that when Variety came calling, he probably saw this as an opportunity to break out as a comedian whose specific brand of comedy might work regionally with an audience that knows what they're getting. And then he decided to, you know, I'm ready to step up and expose myself to a broader scope. But he was, completely wrong about that, and he had nothing prepared for an audience that might want to hear something aside from impersonations of people from the southern parts of the United States. Yeah. You should also keep in mind, comedians, some of the most jealous people on earth. They were probably just jealous. This guy, well, they, I mean, they probably were because, I mean, aside from this guy being terrible, he did take up a spot that I'm sure was so highly many yeah, people were fucking gunning for that, and they're like, this is fucking bullshit. Mm -hmm. I've been down in the fucking boiler room every night, working my ass off, yeah. getting paid. Scrubbing in, toilets at the comedy cellar. I get paid in French fries, yeah. honing my craft, and this dweeb who yeah. dresses up like an old lady, he gets the spot on Just for Laughs. Yeah. What about me? Yes. Anyway, pro tip though, for Variety, and you know, just companies in general who book talent based off of social media impressions, Stop. Stop it. Cut it out. It's time to stop. But if you must, at least review their content to see if it's something that actually makes sense for what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, it's like, to a lesser extent, when EA booked that YouTuber who couldn't even read a teleprompter. Of course, he's not going to say no to a paid opportunity, but I don't know. They should have at least figured out if he was the right fit from the get-go. Maybe be like, hey, we'll give you the jobs ready for you. Just read the lines for us. Let's just make sure you can actually speak in public. Mm -hmm. Just, you know just to be safe. Yes. But they didn't. No. Anyone could have reviewed his live shows, which a lot of which I watched today are just him doing that character. Live. Yeah, he's like a Larry the Cable guy. Yes, exactly, yeah. Yeah. But, and, and then bringing them into a young, like top 10 comic showcase, probably could assume that it wasn't going to go well. Yeah, well, it's just like not the audience for it either. At all. No. Like, <laughs> if it was top 10 in like Alabama, yeah, fine. This guy, I'm not saying he doesn't have a career. No, he's to, doing fine. Like, yeah, like, it's just that you have, like, the most prestigious comedy festival in North America where this is, like, the cutting edge of comedy. Like, mm -hmm. this fucking dressing up as a lady and, like, saying catchphrases with a southern accent shit is, like, not really up to par. Variety forgot to do the one thing that you should do when you go up on stage. Read the room. Anyway, speaking of people who had absolutely no business being on stage in front of paying customers this weekend, DJ, DJ Khaled! DJ Khaled took some time out of his, for whatever reason, very busy schedule this week to perform at the Overwatch Grand Finals in what can only be described as the cringiest musical performance at an esports event so far. They don't want you to perform. You gotta do it anyway. It's part of his mantra. Anyway, when it was announced that DJ Khaled would be Getting in the mix at the Grand Finals, the reaction online was one of confusion, mostly because he isn't what most would consider to be the musical embodiment of a game about fantasy, <laughs> a fantasy world where, um, I don't know, what are we saying? His music is just not great in general, and it, do it doesn't really make sense for this event at all. Yeah. Uh, he's also notorious for being a boring and downright annoying live performer who stops the tracks every 30 seconds to yell random things into the microphone. Yeah. 
To a comedian on the level of Darren Knight, though, signing this artist makes sense because- uh, All right, hold on, I'm gonna get, uh, now I'm gonna, okay, hold on. Elliot, you be the crowd, you, you be the crowd, okay? Okay. You're the crowd, you're the crowd, okay. So I'm gonna get into my uh, my bad comedian persona, okay? All right. Uh, hey, how y'all doing tonight? Woo! Hey, y'all hear about this Overwatch League? I love it, woo! Hey, just booked DJ Khaled to perform at the event. Now, a lot, of, a lot of people are upset about this, but hell, I think he's the perfect fit for the Grand Finals because much like all the players, this man will never eat pussy. Boo! Now you see the joke is because DJ Khaled said publicly, I, 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 and, and then the, the stereotype about gamer uh, boys that you know they'll never like have sex with women or. Now you stop you, insulting the audience. You guys are wrong. Anyways, see you guys next time. I miss you just for laughs. Just for laughs. I mean, uh, look, it's it's possible to roast your audience. Dave Attell shat all over me for like 15 straight minutes. And it was one of the you greatest moments of my life. Yeah. yeah, He just ruined me. Yeah, well, as you would expect, the performance was terrible. And as we indicated earlier, it was mostly just him yelling things into the mic and trying to get the crowd to respond. We the best! While also spending valuable stage time just promoting his new music and saying that it was the number one on iTunes uh, instead of actually playing music. And yes, the crowd not following his shout outs to phrases like, sing it, or Put your hands up if God is the greatest. <laughs> At the Overwatch League Grand this Finals. This guy has, he's gonna have a great second career as like a weird televangelist for his own religion. Yeah, like a motivational speak, yeah. Uh, speaker. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyways, those videos where like the crowd just isn't really singing along, they make for good cringy videos, but the Twitch chat, as usual, was picking up the comedy slack here with responses to the performance like these. Avoid DJ Khaled as teammate. Roadhog IRL. Not even Mercy can res him. Ah. Those are for the Overwatch fans out there. So at the very least, Khaled did succeed in bringing the community together, though probably not in the way that Blizzard had hoped. So we're setting up the top 10 comedians to watch 2019. I got a hot tip that this guy Twitch chat is like blowing things up. Dude. We need to get Twitch chat on stage in Montreal. The only way that would work, and it would actually work, is if they brought, if they did the audience <laughs> roast and brought people up from the audience to just sit there on the stream and let the chat roast them. <laughs> Be unconventional. Yeah. But it could be good. The roast, the roast by the t Twitch chat. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, finally, uh, an update <laughs> to this past weekend's story about MoviePass. Oh, God, guys, stop talking about it. <laughs> MoviePass, as you know, is the movie ticket subscription service that is dying a very slow, very public, just shameful death. <laughs> Shame. Previously, we had reported on the fact that MoviePass had suffered from a service interruption after running out of money. <laughs> and they took out a $5 million loan from the dumbest bank in the world <laughs> in order to restore service to its customers. But even after they had sorted that all out, it was reported that, uh, you know, they basically, now they're blacking out any screenings of this weekend's biggest film, Mission Impossible Fallout. Yeah. Uh, a quote from their barrel-wearing CEO, Mitch Lowe, who can't afford clothes, <laughs> regarding the blackout. <laughs> he said this. As we continue to evolve the service, certain movies may not always be available in every theater on our platform. This is no different than other in-home streaming options that often don't carry the latest shows or movies that may be available on other services. By the way, do you have any change? This is... Oh, this would sometimes be acceptable if all of this bad shit didn't all happen over the past, like, three months, but also their slogan originally stated, see any movie, anytime. So it's like... Gonna have to. Uh, Put yeah. a big asterisk next to that. So it's a bit weird. So, yeah, anyways, people very upset this weekend. They had to go pay for their own movie tickets. And oh I, my and I will God, say, the horror. I will say in response, on all of the MoviePass news, you'll see in the comments and replies to tweets where like, I don't see why everyone's celebrating the death of this company. They provided a, a service that helped consumers. And we've always said that. Sure. We've always said the consumer wins. Right, but, the consumer wins because the company is literally like by design committing suicide. Yeah. It's insane. And the fact that they've even made it this long and are able to secure a $5 million loan on a business plan that is fucking flawed from the get go yeah. is, is kind of baffling and highly entertaining to talk about. Yeah. So when people like you'll see in comments like, ha, and they're like, why are you, why are you dogging them so hard? It's like, well, it was a terrible business idea. Yeah. And it, it's happening the way that everyone knew it would happen. Yeah. That's why people are like, see, they're not saying, Fuck this company for saving me money. That's yeah. not what's happening. Yeah. Uh, anyways, even worse than them blacking out Mission Impossible over the weekend, which was bad, even worse is that 
this is this is a still developing story uh, as of the time that we filmed this, and this all started kicking off Monday morning. The entire MoviePass service has apparently gone dark for every theater chain, except for Landmark Theaters, which is the only chain that they have an actual deal with. Uh, now, at the time that we filmed this, the company has still not responded to, I'm assuming, a lot of news outlets who are uh, sending in questions. They had to replace their phones with banana phones. <laughs> I can only get Fred Flintstone and Wilma on this phone. <laughs> Yabba dabba do! I'm talking to you. See, that's a stolen joke from Family Guy. At least I'll admit okay. it. Okay. At least I'll admit it. Uh, anyways, yeah, they haven't responded at all to the outlets that are saying, "Hey, what happened?" And they also haven't updated their customer service-focused Twitter account at all since the blackout of movie theaters started. So, uh, so Landmark is going to buy the bones of this dead company. Yeah. And just be like, so all right, Landmark now is. we own the the technology. It's now Landmark Pass. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah, they're all all the theater chains are gonna have a movie pass. As as a short, quick review here, I used AMC A Plus this weekend to see Mission Impossible. I booked my tickets three hours before going to see it in Dolby Atmos, and it worked. And also the movie was great. I mean, if you like, if you look back and you're like, man, 90s action movies were awesome. Well, this movie exists, and it's exactly that. I miss the 90s. The plot is whatever, but it's just like, hey, we got to steal plutonium. All right, cool. There's the movie. Yeah. It's just Tom Cruise jumping around. Running, jumping. Running, jumping. Not looking at explosions. It was a ever. fun action film, though. Anyways, don't watch that. No, you should watch it. But also watch our content. We have a brand new episode of News Dump, where if you want to learn more about Movie Pass, you can do that there. Also, a brand new episode of Weekly Weird News. And all of these episodes are now available in podcast form. So go search them on your favorite podcast apps, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.